Nope, we don't need to speed up the process. We don't need to nuke this. You know why? Because this is the non-microwave truth. This is your brother, C.L. Whiteside, and this is brought to you by Time of Grace Ministry. Now, if you stumbled across this podcast, don't leave. Don't leave. Check it out. This is a podcast that's going to challenge culture's truth and culture's perspective. And we're going to do it from a biblical approach. Like we want God to put us on that path and make our path straight. So, yeah, tune into the podcast. Let's check this out. Now, you might be like, why in the world are you calling or saying you're my brother? We're going to talk so much about connections today and bonds. And by the end of this, you might be like, OK, I understand how we are connected because we connected in some form or fashion. And you're going to see you're going to truly understand why I say we are connected and why I call you my, my brother or, or sister. And our first world problem question is this. What is the number one thing that connects people or allows people to think like, all right, I possibly could trust this person or maybe I want to have a conversation with this person, but I don't know this person at all. What is the number one thing that you think connects people that do not know each other, especially into attempting to build some type of relationship or have some type of conversation? Now, in America, I feel like it's race or I feel like it's gender or a combination of both. And this is something like if you are from a different country, brother Ty, you got a completely different perspective on this, possibly like I would appreciate hearing someone from a different country share their perspective on this. Things that they feel like connect people or connect their culture, because America, I feel like it's race and gender a lot. I could be wrong. No, you can definitely disagree with me. I want to hear from you. Instagram or Twitter. My handle is Champion Life 23. If you're on YouTube, drop it in the comments right now. What is the number one connector? For those who don't know each other to be like, all right, I can trust this person. I can have a conversation with this person. And this is our first world problem. It is dinner time. The title of our episode is a special connection. The number one uniter. Now, if you looked on social media or you looked on the news we really only have reasons to be divided if you looked at just those things. And if you are united, it's because you are the same race. You are the same gender. You have the same political affiliation. You are from the same area. You're in the same frat. You're in the same sorority. Something that's overlooked is sometimes they'll be like, you should be connected because you do the same mess. You, do the, you got the same dirt. And a connection that we have that sometimes people don't even think about is, and I can guarantee this is rather you are rich or rather you are poor, rather you are in America or rather you're in Brazil or Europe or Africa. Every single one of us has some type of problem or we have some type of mess in our life. Every single one of us was, was born and every single one of us will die. Every single one of us has sin. That means we have done evil. We have done something that God looks at and says, I cannot absolutely stand. And every single one of us needs a, a savior. And to be more specific, every single one of us needs Jesus Christ. Now, it's special to have like an earthly family who's there for you and that you feel connected with and you have great bonds with. But man, it's something super special about having a spiritual family like that hits completely different. And when I talk about a spiritual family, I'm talking about people that can lift you up. People that can remind you about Jesus and get you focused back on him like that is so, so special. And an example of this being so special is there have been times in my life where I have prayed where I've been looking for certain answers. And God has never said, little bald man, I'm talking to you. God has never talked to me like that. But how he has spoken to me is one person has said this, then another person has said this, and another person has said this, then another person has said this. These are four or five different people who don't talk to each other at all. And then all of a sudden I'll see it in God's word too. And it's like, oh, this is God talking to me. And it's like, how can something like that be possible? And I'm not talking about like some ordinary message. I'm talking about something where it's like, okay, I've been praying about this. I've been looking for answers. And then people just come in and speak. And it's like, why can these people give me the same truth in, in that regard? And we're going to look at that. It's a passage from John chapter 14, verse 15. How is this possible? This is Jesus talking. He says, if you love me, keep my commands and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth is the spirit of truth. 
The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. So why can't we be you, you ever had that? Like you hear the same message over and over from different people. It's because like the spirit of truth covers us as believers. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. And this is another reason I say, like, you shouldn't date and you shouldn't play around with somebody who doesn't believe in the triune God, who doesn't believe in Jesus as the Savior. Like, it's not wise at all. And I know some of you like, we click in so many ways, though. They just don't believe. Like, I, I wouldn't mess with it. I, I wouldn't do it. Because it's like, you don't click in, in the number one way. And let's say you get married or something. You might get tired of your spouse, right? And if you don't have loyalty to God, which is the number one thing, you sh you going to bounce like deuces peace. So you, you, you're playing with fire in that. And then number two, you're never going to have the same spirit guiding you. You're not going to have the Holy Spirit both guiding you if one of you don't believe in God. You they might have another spirit guiding them. And it ain't it ain't God. It's it's a demon. It's the, it's the enemy. Like so. Yeah, I, that's why I wouldn't do that. And on this episode of a special connection, the number one uniter. You have to realize you cannot really go to the media or to the news to look to find examples of us being united. Like they're constantly going to tell us that we are, are divided. And I've seen this trickle down effect in, in education. So I work at a school. We got white people. We got black people. We got Asian people. We got Hispanic people. We got people from China. We got people from Japan. We got somebody from Africa. Like we have people from all over the world. And sometimes the students will start to feel like we're not really divided. The school talks about how diverse we are, but we're really not united. And I'm just like, dude, go look at lunch. Like there are tables with every single race in there. There are so many tables with different types of hobbies. But we'll look at the times that it doesn't work and be like, look, we are so divided. And it's like, man, we got to look at the times and the ways that we are actually united because there's a lot of ways that we actually are united. And I want to look at this passage or I want to look at scripture, which talks about some special connection. And that special connection that I'm talking about is following Jesus Christ, following Jesus Christ, because I know I have brothers and sisters all over the world. And I just want you to think, have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about that connection? Have you ever thought like we have the same spirit guiding us? All right. This is the power of a special connection right here, the power of wanting to advance the, the kingdom. And these are this is a story of two paths crossed. And this comes from Acts chapter eight. We're going to start at verse 26. Now, an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Now, this is something right here. Don't be afraid to be cool with someone of a different um, political affiliation or a different interest or, or of a different race. Like, don't be afraid to do that. that. That's OK to step outside your comfort zone. Verse 27 says, so Paul started out on his way. He met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Candic, which means queen of the Ethiopians. So we have a Jew and we have an African who've never met. OK, that's that's where we at. a Jew and an African. They've never met each other. And this just reminds me, like, if you look at like people want friends more than ever, people want to be connected more than ever. People want to be a part of something more than ever. They want to feel more. They, they want to feel loved more, more than ever. And they want to feel a part of something. So check out how this man found connection. This man, this is the Ethiopian, had gone to Jerusalem to worship. And on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Now, look at this. Sometimes we deny what the spirit tells us to do. Sometimes the spirit is saying, go over there and say hi to that person. Go over there and check on that person. Just smile at that person and be like, mm -mm, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. But look at how the spirit blesses this so much. Verse 30. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah, the prophet. Philip asked him, do you understand what you are reading? Now, I just want to point this out real quick. The Old Testament was in Africa already. Sometimes people like the Old Testament, blah, blah, blah. The Old Testament was already in Af Africa. Did you, did you catch that? Some would look at Jeremiah 38 to say why, but but I don't know. So you can do a little research on that. Go check out Jeremiah 38. And that's why some people would say that the Old Testament was in Africa. Look at what the Ethiopian says, verse 31. 
He says, how can I understand unless someone explains it to me? So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now, have you ever just wanted to to get in God's word so much that you invited like a stranger or somebody you really didn't know? Like, have you ever done that? Have you have you ever done that? Now, what we see is in our world, in our society, we are more connected. We find more bonds a lot of times through evil and through doing dirt and through sinning. Like that's usually how people get connected. Like I got to keep this person secret. This person got to keep my secret. We got to go do this crazy, stupid thing together. Like that's a lot of times how a lot of us are, are connected. A lot of times how we're corrected. Now, as Christians, realize the special connection that we have, like realize the special connection that we have. Usually as new believers and immature believers, we value things that don't matter like way, way too much, way, way too much. So that's just something for you to to think about and to check yourself with. Verse 32 says this. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before his shearer, it's silent, is silent. So he did not open his mouth in his humiliation. He was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants for his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about himself or someone else? Then Philip began with the very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. The Isaiah passage was prophesying about Jesus. So when I read that stuff was talking about the lamb and all stuff that was talking about Jesus getting taken to the slaughter. Now, I've been places. I have been places where people don't know me, but people will be telling me about their sex life. They'll be talking to me, talking to me about their messy, bad or toxic relationships. They'll talk about even I've heard people share with me that they nights in, in jail. Now, this just tells me how much people are looking to connect, how much people enjoy just talking just yapping, just, just talking, how much people enjoy talking. Now it's nothing like, it's nothing like connecting through the gospel, connecting through the good news, connecting through Jesus Christ and, and sharing what he has done and being reflected on his love and his compassion and his grace and his mercy. Now he's justified us. Like it's not, it's nothing like that. It's nothing like that. But I just want to point out, did you catch that when Philip started sharing with the other persons, um, when you, when Philip started sharing, he went to where the other person's focus or where the other person's concerns were like that's some major notes. Those are good notes for us to take when we have conversations and we have people that we come in, in, in contact with. Verse 36 says this, as they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. The, spe the special connections that you and I have rejoice about, like praise God for those connections, because those are special connections. And that, those should really be our number one uniters right there. And, you know, personally, I'm really in a space where. I can appreciate so much of life because I'm not obsessed with somebody's race. You know, I really don't care if you into sports. I really don't care if we have a bunch in common or not. But but I'm going to tell you this. I really appreciate other people following Jesus and being on it. Like you look at their fruit and you're like, oh, that's inspiring. I'm not talking about the fruit they're producing. It is sour or it's bad. I'm talking about people that are producing fruit like it's inspiring to see other brothers and sisters following jesus and like on it like they they on fire for it like that that's a true blessing for me now if we got some other stuff in common that's cool i'm not even gonna lie if we got some other stuff in, in common that's cool you like the bucks i like the bucks well i didn't really like the bucks this past year i don't know what Giannis and dame was doing but that's a topic for another day but yes if we have some things in common praise the lord for that but the number one thing that i'm really looking at is like that special connection that the Holy Spirit gives us because we are all followers and we are all trying to bear fruit for the kingdom, for the kingdom. And, and what I just want to point out is like, man, when you don't know people or you don't have like the same hobbies and everything, sometimes that's intimidating to people. But what I have learned and what I have found is that you can ask some questions and you can learn a, a lot about life. And it's truly special to be able to ask something you know, sometimes you want to ask questions like, I don't know if this is stupid. 
I don't know if I'm going to offend this person. But when you have that connection, people give you grace. People will allow you to, to get to know them. People allow you to get to ask things that you've always wondered, but you, you didn't know if you could ask. When you when you had that connection, you can ask that. And the number one thing to have in common is what? Is the love for, for Jesus, the love for him and the love for the transformation that he has made on you and the transformation that he's made on me. And on this episode of A Special Connection, the number one uniter, I just want to point out, we are going to have to step out of our comfort zone at times like we, we got to step out of our comfort zone and I want to give you this illustration like if there was a heavyweight champ right heavyweight champ and you don't even got to be in the box and if it was a heavyweight champ who dodged all the people that were good all the serious contenders and was like you know what I only want to fight the chumps and the people that that I know I can beat we're gonna look at them and be like that's a weak champ like he need to get his title taken away but as Christians how many times do we dodge out of the comfort zone experiences and situations. And I'm not talking about just picking people that clearly don't believe in God, but I'm talking about we don't embrace those out of comfort zone situations and experiences with other believers or finding out if somebody believes or not because they don't necessarily look like us or they don't talk like us or they look a little different than, than, than us. Now, I would say consciously and constantly Seek out those experiences and those relationships, not just the relationships that are always the easiest, because if you always searching for the relationships that you think are going to be the easiest or be the most acceptable to the world, then you are you're coasting. You are for sure coasting and eventually coasting is what's going to define you and it and even worse, shape you. And that keeps you from maturing and growing as much as you possibly can as a Christian. Now, I want to summarize this to all all my brothers and sisters and followers of Jesus. I want to look at Ephesians chapter two, verse 19 to 22. And this is how we're going to wrap this episode up of a special connection, the number one uniter. It says, consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. So that's why I said we brothers and sisters. Do you get it now? Like we're brothers and sisters because like we're no longer foreigners or strangers. We got adopted by God. It says built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So know that you have brothers and sisters all over the planet. We have a worldwide universal God. Our God is not tiny. Our God is just not the God of, of Milwaukee or Chicago or Los Angeles or, or Detroit or Athens. Like that's, we, we got a big guy. We have a big guy. And I'm telling you, the world is not going to like this. Like the world is not going to like the fact that you have a, a brother or sister who's a different race or of a different gender or of a different political affiliation. They don't want this to happen. They don't want this to happen. But we got to remember the special connection that we have. The number one uniter is Jesus and the faith that we have. Like we, we share the same grace. We share the same compassion. We share the same righteousness because of Jesus. And just remember, I just want to just r remind you, like that connection is so special it is so deep we have a blood bond we have a blood bond christ's blood washed away our sins washed away my sins washed away all of our sins and unites us in the faith and as sure as we have it assures that we have redeemed stamped on like our let's say we have redeemed stamped on our passport of this life and more importantly the, the, the afterlife and this is the non-microwave truth Thanks for joining me on this episode of A Special Connection, the number one uniter. Don't be afraid to have a brother and sister who does not look like you, talk like you, walk like you, thinks a little different than you. Because the number one thing that unites us is Jesus Christ's death and victory and resurrection. Peace, punch, Captain Crunch, to know the drugs and yes to Jesus. I am out. Peace.